so the books are they available online where can someone get them if they want your books okay for people who are away from my city you can get them online on amazon and kobo but yes. if you need print copies you get them from um Amazon that's yes. print on demand. Yes. But if you need e-copies for your e-readers, you get them from Amazon and from Kobo. Yeah. And then for people within the city, uh, I have the books in the Edmonton Public Library. Okay. Some of the copies and if you go there, you find maybe book 1 is there, book 2 is not there. Yes. Just ask your librarian. Okay. Then they'll order the books for you okay. and I have copies at uh, Indigo yes. at the bookstore and um Audrey's. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I'm still negotiating to have them in more books. Okay. Mm -hmm. So to to the aspiring writers out there, mm -hmm. um, maybe um take us a little bit more into the creative process. How do you approach the creative process? Do you for example research before embarking on a piece of work? or you just go as it comes with the stories mm. normally it depends okay. like um when i wrote my first book yes. because uh, it's set in nairobi yes. and in a rural area in kenya yes i did not need to research so much because the story came as an idea okay so i was just uh, reflecting on things that i know okay and getting sophia my fictional character to embody those things yes but um whenever i set a book away from uh, places which i'm very familiar with yes of course during the editing i do some research yes. just to make sure you know like um, if i'm talking on my character walking from even if it's Nairobi a city that i know if mm -hmm. i'm talking of somebody traveling from point a to b yes. sometimes i have to go and check like how long would it take somebody to walk yes. or to drive or to ride in a matatu mm -hmm. and for books which are set mm, in places which i'm not very familiar with like i have um it's not here but i have a mystery book which is set in kajiado okay because the main character is a maasai woman okay so i've traveled to the area i have a rough idea but it's a fictional town which i created is 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 that the 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 one with the maasai detective women Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So such places I have to do a little bit of uh, research okay. and mainly it's about if I'm talking of a small town in a Maasai area, yes. what would it look like? How big would it be? Mm -hmm. And then when I wrote um my I write women's fiction, I've tried um A, a mystery crime mystery that's okay. the Maasai uh, the female detective, detective. Yes. and I also write romance the okay. books are not here yes. so those ones are set in Canada okay you know on immigrants they are traveling from yellow knife yes they, they go to Saskatoon okay. and then before Edmonton yes so, so I, I've not been to yellow knife yes. I've been to Saskatchewan yes so I had to do research on, before on you know yeah. like how is winter like in mm. yellow knife yes how is winter like in Saskatoon mm -hmm. I know winter in our town because yeah. the story is over December mm -hmm. And when I take them to to Kenya, yes. cause in book two, yes. the character called Omondi yes. is taking the girl to introduce her to his parents. To his parents. I take them to Tanzania, so the place I have to do research. So mm -hmm. it really depends on what I'm looking for. Yeah. And also for my nonfiction books, yes. I do more research than for my fiction uh, fiction yeah okay. because for those ones if it's issues which i'm not very clear on yes then i do research i can do library research yes or i talk to people who are uh, more conversant in that particular topic okay yeah so i can say i do research to but to the levels differ depending on, on what them. i'm working on okay mm -hmm. and and so like personally for example i appreciate that there's technology now mm 
<laughs> if if for example I want to write a book on Kingston Jamaica I don't have to be in Jamaica mm-hmm. you can go to Google Maps yeah. you can go to the pictures you can go to Facebook you can read even the newspapers in Jamaica mm-hmm. online mm-hmm. so technology really does help writers a lot right yeah yeah and now there's the AI okay have you tried um AI scares writers I think because mm-hmm. it takes away the job from our hands right hey. right now um i remember back in school when we were students at the university yeah you'd be expected to write an article for example right mm-hmm. and then submit it to website like turn it in yeah now because ai is everywhere people go to for example chat gpt mm-hmm. and type in say uh, maybe the article is about um say homelessness in edmonton so you just go there uh, write me an article on homelessness in edmonton mm-hmm. and voila you have your article already Mm-hmm. So it it really does take away from creativity, right? But if you read um that article, mm. it's um you normally when I read I can tell this person picked something from okay. AI yes. and they did not give the right prompts. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I think with the AI I'm not very conversant, but I think uh it's now the creator you really have to know what you're looking for yes so it's like the questions that we normally ask when we go out in the field to do research yes if you don't ask a very clear question the person responding will not give you the right the answer the right answer yes i think that's how ai is as well mm-hmm. you really have to know your subject mm-hmm. give it the proper prompt mm-hmm. for it to produce the the, the, the information yes. and then as i mentioned i can normally tell when somebody has just picked the information from there the mm-hmm. story and mm-hmm. they are publishing because yeah. uh, i think people still need to give it their voice yes so even if it's produced for you that first article mm-hmm. 500 700 words mm-hmm. As a writer you still need to read mm-hmm. and rewrite so that it's got your voice. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's the challenge that people are going to get into uh, even if we are very scared of AI. Mm-hmm. I think that's how it's going to filter like who knows the type of questions to ask mm-hmm. to get the proper information and who just asks a broad Around, question yeah, yeah. because then it will bring you a broad response yes yes that's um from the bits that i've seen uh, sometimes i'm like this one should have edited this <laughs> <laughs> so so for you um ai is a positive mostly right i i can say yeah okay. i haven't used uh, much of it yes. but um from what i've read around it and uh, heard from other writers because mm-hmm. i belong to groups yes it's uh, like um it's not taking away our jobs of writing because mm-hmm. nobody can really write in the voice that i do mm-hmm. but it can help save us time mm-hmm. so that we focus on the writing on the main thing, yeah. like right now I'm not very good at marketing. Yeah. Right now I'm trying to learn how can I use AI mm-hmm. to like to help me do my my marketing. Mm-hmm. So that it saves me time to go to go back and uh, and do my writing. Okay. So it's um it depends on what your needs are. Okay. And then you I can use it in that. For me it's mostly marketing. Okay. Yeah. this an an issue for example of one of the magazines mm-hmm. i'm not sure which one yeah. but a major magazine mm-hmm. the whole issue was written by ai even the photos were generated through ai mm-hmm. so that that's what i meant like the then that way it takes away the job from the writer right uh-huh. they will not need you to mm-hmm. to write the traditional articles but still again from what i get from my groups mm-hmm. the the publishers still need a writer mm-hmm. to come up with the ideas mm-hmm. to come up with the right questions yes because i believe it's not 
everybody who thinks the way writers think. Mm -hmm. So even if you were to ask a machine to write for you, let's say a novel about African women who've gone to school mm -hmm. and their journey of becoming career women, yes. you'll need to know what type of information to feed the computer yes. so that it produces the story. So mm -hmm. it's not, a, I believe it's not anybody and everybody who can um, use machines to produce the story. You yeah. need to know what I'm looking at. I'm mm. looking for issues to do with gender relations. Yes. I'm looking for issues to do with equity yeah. and not equality. Yeah. I'm looking for issues of um, uh, how they balance, you know, cultural expectations of them mm. and what education has trained them to yes. become, you know, professionals. So yes. I, for me as a writer, I'm not afraid okay. because I'm like, it's only me who knows the issues I'm looking for. So yes. even if I'm to feed the machine, mm -hmm. it's those very specific issues that will make my books different from... You can write the same books as me, yeah. but the questions you'll ask the computer yeah, will not are different because you have a different experience perspective too, yes. and I have a different experience mm -hmm. because born in a rural area, brought up in a rural area. I mm -hmm. don't know if you were born in the rural areas or in the city. Mm -hmm. So the type of questions, prompts that you'll give the machine mm -hmm will be different from the ones that, that I'll give. Did, so yeah. for me, I believe that that's how the uniqueness will continue. Okay. Somebody who lives, who was born and brought up in Canada, they can read books and decide to write about, um, you know, African women. Yes. But do they have the type of experience, skills and knowledge that I do? Mm so that they ask the computer the right the questions. Right questions yeah. yeah. So something like, for example, um, a little girl in a village, say in Western Kenya, mm -hmm. um, going to fetch water in the river. Mm -hmm. She's carrying this pot on her head. She mm -hmm. can feel the pinch of the pot on her head, mm -hmm. how it feels, the feel of the ground, if she's barefoot or not, mm -hmm. the sounds around her, mm -hmm. what she sees in the water. Mm -hmm. So those little subtle nuances that um, somebody who is far removed from the scene, who didn't go, who didn't grow around that neighborhood or area, yeah. cannot know. For example, um, mm -hmm. I I had a little bit of of the village feel because I was born in a small town, mm -hmm. but because of the war in my country, we ran away from the town and we were in the village for a little bit. Mm -hmm. So one thing that fascinated me, for example, was one of the young men telling mm -hmm. us, smelling in the air, and he said. Can you guys feel that smell in the air? We said, yes. Said, every time you smell that, mm -hmm. it's a snake. Oh. Yeah. So somebody who was not in the village who didn't have that experience could smell it, but cannot say it's a snake. It's a snake. So something wow. like that, right? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Those, so those are the warning signs. Exactly. Before. Yeah. It's um, So that's why we keep on saying... People not to be afraid mm -hmm. because um, when it comes to literature, when it comes to writing, mm -hmm. it's to do with um, what you tell the computer. Yes. Uh, yeah. As you mentioned, somebody might think, oh, that girl carrying a pot on her head, mm -hmm. is it not hurting her back? Yes. Because people still ask <laughs> that question and I'm like, no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So those are the nitty gritties that will make your book different from, from somebody who has generated it from uh, yeah, AI and all that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, le le maybe let me um, ask you this. Mm. When writing your books, are you conscious of the readers? Do you have expectations? Do you feel like the readers are co-creators in your story? Because you're putting the words down, mm -hmm. but the readers will then recreate those words as images in their mind. Do you think of that? Mm. I don't remember <laughs> <laughs> thinking of that because um, mostly I write like when the idea strikes. Okay. You know. It's are, are you conscious of who your readers are when, when you're writing? 
nowadays I try sometimes to think of them because we are told we need to think of our readers mm -hmm. as the market. Yes. But again, I lose them when I get into the book okay. because I'm like, I'm just putting the Pouring idea. Pouring all the knowledge out, right? Uh -huh. Like um, when I wrote this book too, Slowed yeah. by a Baby. Yes. I think it was less than three months and okay. I did not bring my romance books. Yes. Uh, the first one is The Fear Within Us okay. and the second one is The Family Between Us. Yes. I wrote The Family Between Us within 21 days. Oh, wow. <laughs> because the idea, you know, when the ideas uh, came, yes. I was like, oh, now that this story has ended the Canadian side, mm -hmm. what if, what would go right or wrong if he takes this girl home? Home, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that story, because uh, I, I normally have some conflict in my, my books, of course, with all stories. So, when I took them home, mm -hmm. you know, it was like they were running towards something and away from something. Oh, okay. If without being a spoiler, mm -hmm. no, it's not a spoiler because uh, it's at the back of the book. Yes. Uh, when they get home, the parents of the the guy they have a girl. For him okay and okay. he has also brought this one. Oh wow that 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 makes me feel like it's a bollywood <laughs> almost Hollywood. I, 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 do you think um these books could be turned into movies one day uh i have that dream so okay. can somebody out there make it a reality <laughs> because you'll enjoy yeah if you follow sophia's story yes. or you follow the because the the other series it's a romance yeah. i'm trying to look at um how do immigrants experience the romantic world okay. when they are away from the place they call home? Okay. Because uh, back home, I think if you've been brought up there, you know uh, how to, maybe for men, yes. they know how far they can go approaching a girl mm -hmm. or a woman. Mm -hmm. But then the question came to mind like, you know, when you're away from the place that you know how things operate, yeah. Like, if you come to Canada as an adult, mm -hmm. do people get scared to approach uh, women because partly they are scared of them? Um, and I think that came up from what I'd been following in the media. Sometimes you see a man has been taken to court for harassment. Okay. And I was like, what happens to the people who are not brought up here? They mm -hmm. don't the definition of um, harassment could be different in their countries. You mm -hmm. know, they might come from a country where it's normal to, because you are sweet talking the girl, mm -hmm. in those countries, it's nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. But then you go to another place and you try to do it and yeah. uh, somebody might be like, oh, that's sexual harassment. Yes. They take you forward. So yeah. that's why I started writing uh, these books about immigrants mm -hmm. just with that idea like how do they experience this okay. does it make them uh, stop you know um, trying to talk to women who are not from their cultural background okay. or do they still take that uh, risk so as I mentioned I'm always my brain is always on social issues that okay. I see okay happening around oh, okay mm -hmm. I, I did mention about movies um i'll cite you an example in the year i think 2011 mm -hmm. uh the the rapper 50 cent mm -hmm. offered chino achebe mm -hmm. um i think a million dollars to to use the title of things fall apart his debut novel in in in, in a movie mm -hmm. but uh you know it was turned down uh, so so they are like the book itself is more important than the million that he was being given, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I'm thinking of value now. Do you make enough from doing this or you have to supplement it with a different income? The books. Oh, the books. 
tell 50 cent to bring the million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, in relation to that, I have not followed up that case, yeah. but uh, partly I would understand uh, because if you look at Chinua Achebe and things fall apart, yes, you know, those books used to be set books mm -hmm. in school. Yes. It's known all over. Mm -hmm. And I imagine he's made more than the one more million. More than one million, yeah. And again, it will depend on what type of song was... Was it a song or a movie? No, I think a title for a movie. For a movie. Yes. Which was not the a movie about the book. I think probably, yeah. So because just wanted to take uh, things fall apart, but maybe they, they were not in... in, in oh, in, yeah. Because then, yeah, it was it right that purpose, he, yeah. he did not accept because um, what happens tomorrow if his book is turned into a movie? Mm -hmm. And then there's somebody already there with, uh, with that. Mm -hmm. And again, it will depend on, you know, what type of a movie was going to go by that name. Mm -hmm. Is it contradictory to the, the main message in the, in the book? Mm -hmm. So... If I was to be offered, it will have to be my books, mm -hmm. like the themes in the books. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the story that I would like to go out there for people to enjoy. Okay. Not uh, somebody using Adding the their title own salt. to do their own, because yeah. they might end up spoiling, you know, if it's not a good movie or song then people might listen to it and when they see the book tomorrow they are mm -hmm. like oh no yeah uh, yeah so to an extent i think he was um he was right yes and for me you know over time because i write books i also read about legal issues to do with the copyright okay so like if i was to allow my books to be turned into the movie, I know what type of um, or the extent of copyright that I'll be giving away. Yes. Because nowadays we don't just give, even though people who are not informed, they are still giving away, like to publishers, they are giving away all the copyright. Yeah. But we are learning that you can break it down into... You know, just Even the regions, you know, mm -hmm, yeah. the language, yes. the audio, yes. video, you yes. can separate the copyright into components. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in relation to why I made the joke, like let him bring the, the million. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'm still, I've not reached that level of living off my books. Yes. That's why I told you that i um, Marketing is still a challenge for me mm -hmm. because I'm self-published. Okay. So I have to market my books mm -hmm. and uh, it's still an area where I have to learn. So yeah, I haven't reached the level where I can be like, yeah. I'm now a writer. I have to, I do, I do research yes. as my main source of income okay uh, yeah and um the type of research that i do is still on social issues yes i do research among immigrants yes. that's why i came up with these two journaling books yes that's so grandpa that and um yeah and i'm leaning more towards issues of immigrants and cultural heritage okay like um do we have informational stories that we would like to leave behind yes. someday? Yes. So that's what I do, encouraging people to document their stories. And I came up with this uh, book one, what's the origin and meaning of your name? So okay. that grandparents, grandchildren can use the information in here to yes. talk about, because I believe talking about your name is like, the starting point yes. to talk about your your family. Yes. Uh, yeah. And I'm also working on um, other journaling books about food. Okay. So that again, immigrants can start talking about um, food types because sometimes we set the table mm -hmm. 
we put some <laughs> green vegetables there and the yeah. children are like and what is this <laughs> before i reflect and i'm like oh they've like grown up in canada okay <laughs> you know you almost want to be like hey you don't know saga or you don't know this so i was like what's going to happen when we are no longer here mm -hmm. you know are the children going to know anything about their ancestry yeah. so that's why i'm encouraging immigrants to document their stories yes. as something a legacy that they can leave behind for future generations so okay. that's like my main uh, work yes. that's high and my bread okay and then i write my books <laughs> at sunset okay partly because it's ideas that strike and i'm like I need to pull that down. Yes. Yeah, but uh, I hope that one day I can be able to do, to live out of them. Yeah, do do you hit a writer's block sometimes or you um I maybe not. Okay. Uh yes and no. Okay. When I get to a level where like the story stops, mm -hmm. I have very many other things that i run to and okay. do okay i can go back to my research work okay because normally when i interview people i record so i have oh, so material. much for, uh, material there to okay. prepare for them yes i read a lot okay sometimes i have to like keep telling myself like stop reading <laughs> go and write so okay. Okay. whenever i'm writing yeah. and i feel like it's not flowing as it should. Mm -hmm. I close my computer, I pick a book, mm -hmm. or I put I pick my e-reader because yeah. I'm always reading a book and I read or I go to my kitchen and I prepare food. Okay. Or I call a friend and we chat. So yeah. I'm like if I cannot write it's not the end. Yeah. I just close and I get something else. Yeah. Uh, for 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 readers out there who would want to reach you or mm -hmm. who'd want to access uh, certain information like um, the journaling stuff, mm -hmm. how can they get to, to, uh, to reach to you? Okay, they can, the fastest place is for them to go to amazon.com, amazon.ca, okay. or go to kobo.com yes. and access the books there. Yes. But to reach me, they can go to wegrowideas.net. Okay. They will find all the information there. Or if they go to eileenomosa.com, okay. it takes them still to my to my books. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and, for, and for the readers, in our town here just yes. go to the any edmonton public library yeah. type in my name's eileen omosa the books should be able to pop up yes. if not then just ask your librarian they will order the books because yeah. uh, i applied i'm in the public library Libraries. system okay mm -hmm. yeah it's it's been a great pleasure uh, having this conversation with you mm -hmm. i no, this is not the end of it. We'll probably yeah. have you come back because there's tons and tons of things to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, what would be your last parting shot to my viewers out there mm. for now? Keep reading books. I'm not saying this because I write books. You don't, you don't have to or you don't need to go and read my books, but um, read books because uh, over the years i've found that reading books is actually a way of um, traveling the world yes because different creators take you to different parts of the world reading books gives you a wider perspective or lens through which you view the world because um, there's a lot of in the stories that people write there's a lot of background information about people's way of life yes. so by reading books tomorrow when you see me or you see another person along the street you will not um, have just that one perspective for example this is an african woman she could be or she must be this way the stereotypes but by reading different books then you will get to understand why people behave the way they do why mm -hmm. they do certain things mm -hmm. and that um, not everybody fits into one box there are mm -hmm. so many boxes where human beings come from yes. so i believe 
and it's from myself by reading books set in different parts of the world. Yes. Whenever I meet with a person who does not look like me or come from where I come from, yes. I don't start by putting them in one box. Yes. And part of it is because of reading a lot of books and traveling to many different parts of the world. So for my readers, go read a book. You'll never go wrong with reading a book. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much again for having this uh, chat with me on the sit down with me, did he say? Um, thank you, everybody. That marks it for now. We'll be doing another one next time. So look out for this space. And all the contacts and details of um, Eileen will be in the, you know, in the description. So look out for more content from this podcast. See you next time. Have a good time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.